And our first guest is a Major League Baseball player. He's not A, he may be the best Major League Baseball <laughs> player. Three-time MVP, eight-time All-Star. Mike Trout joins us. Mike, you hitting the leadoff spot for us today. And that, if we add it to the 161 times you've done it in your Major League career, it's one full season hitting in the leadoff spot. Are you comfortable <laughs> taking the first pitches of the day, I assume? I'm very comfortable, thank you. Uh, what are you doing to try to pass the time? Uh, I mean, I think I've, I've done everything I I've could possibly. I've played every board game with my wife. Uh, I've tried trick shots with the golf club and, and a ping pong ball. Um, it's, it's getting to a point where I'm running out of things to do. I think everybody is. The golf trick shot. Yeah. The golf trick shot has shown up. You have shared that. We'll share that with everyone on social media. You made a golf impact on us earlier in the year with your top golf showing. The golf trick shot was pretty impressive. How many times did it take till we got the one that counted? So uh, my my buddy staying with us, he's uh, you know plays in the big leagues as well, Michael Kahn, and he was filming it. And uh, I, I bounced it in on the 25th or 26th try. Uh, I didn't want to bounce it in, so we had to redo it. And then about the 30, 35th try, th from 30 to 35, we weren't really counting, but it's around that number. I made it. Uh, and there was ping pong balls on the background and I didn't like the video. So I was like, we got to make it again. So I made it again, probably. <laughs> yeah. So, so there you go. There's, there's the final answer. It was a few takes, but yeah. at least you got it perfect, which is, uh, perhaps the most important part of the whole deal. Uh, let, let's get to the baseball stuff. How long, Mike, do you think if a green light was put up and said, whatever the circumstances we're going to play? How long would it take you and other players to get ready to play regular season games? Uh, you, you know, that's a good question. I think it's um, different for everybody. Obviously, position players, um, you know, I could, uh, you know, I'm working out every day with Albert. And, um, you know, I think position players will take, you know, a couple weeks, maybe two weeks. Uh, you know, just get back in shape and get to play. I think everybody wants to play as soon as possible. Uh, it's a little different for pitchers. They got to you know, condition their arm and uh, throw, throw some bullpens and just get uh, ramped up a little bit. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty tough for them to, you know, how they were all geared up for spring training and now they had to, you know, lower it back and shut it down a little bit. And, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all a guessing game right now. No one really knows where or when, uh, where we'll play or when we'll play. Um, you know, we're always, you know, very optimistic, hopefully sooner rather than later and, you know, hopefully playing this year, um, you know, one day I hear something uh, that we're going to be playing and, you know, the next thing I'm reading, it's, you know, it's going to be a little bit while. So it's, you know, it's a tough, tough, uh, you know, mentally to, to, you know, deal with that because, you know, I'm, I, I'm a guy that needs to go outside. I need to be outside. I need to be active. And, uh, you know, it's a different lifestyle for me staying in the house all day. And, you know, it's, it's different. I think a lot of us are uh, finding that. Mike, uh, there have been several ideas floated out there of how to restart baseball. Many of them include playing without fans, and several of those are do it at your spring training site. For you guys, I would be out in Arizona. What would that be like for you as players if they said, hey, we need you guys to all quarantine and stay in a hotel and not really interact with the outside world for a stretch to get the season started in one place as safely as possible for the players and those involved? How would that sit with you? Yeah, I think it's uh, different for everybody. Um, you know, uh, quarant you know, play obviously want to play, you know, as fast and, um, uh, fast as we can get to us, get to a city, uh, maybe Arizona, you know, they're flowing out Florida, but, um, you know, being quarantined in a city, um, you know, I was reading, you know, for, if, if we play, you know, a couple months, it'd, it'd be difficult, you know, for some guys, you know, people, what are you going right. to do with family members? Uh, my wife is pregnant. Uh, what am I going to do when, you know, she goes into labor? Am I going to have to quarantine for two weeks after I come back? Because, uh, you know, obviously I can't miss that, uh, you know, birth of our first child. So it, 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 there's a lot of flag, red flags. There's a lot of questions. Um, obviously, we, have, we would have to agree on it as players. Um, but I think the mentality is we want to get back as soon as we can. But obviously, it's got to be realistic. You know, we can't be sitting in our hotel rooms and, you know, just going from the field to the hotel room and not being able to do anything. I think that's just, uh, I think that's pretty crazy. Yeah, and that's some of the reality that we are talking about here going forward. And the players associations and all these sports are probably going to have to deal with if we get to that point. Uh, just for you, Mike, your career has been like off the charts great. As 
terrific a start as you'll ever see with a player with all the tools defensively everything else and this is the prime of your career and however this season plays out if at all it's going to take away maybe what you could have produced uh, have you had any of those thoughts of you know here's another unbelievable stretch of my career here that sadly is going to be lost statistically and otherwise because of all this I definitely see it um, you know each year I feel like I'm getting better and obviously each year you you gain you get a little older so yeah I'm still young still 28 uh, a lot of a lot of great years ahead of me um, you know I think uh, you know a lot of people thought this would be my best year yet coming up um, I, I agree you know I think uh, the experience the uh, the mentality I have the the way I can um, you know hand on my hand figure out situations like in the batter's box yeah I'm learning new things each and every year that's helping me you know get through them uh, them struggles and you know it's definitely benefit from all that and like you said it's just a it's just a different situation obviously you know just not being able to play obviously we got to do what's right for the country and sure. for our people you know we got to stay safe yeah, 291 last year, 45 homers. So the room for improvement is is really small. But I want to <laughs> dive a little bit deeper on that topic. But what what was it, let's say, last year that you learned? Individual pitchers, patterns of pitchers. What what is it that took you one more step in your mind that had you ready for your best season ever this year? Yeah, I think uh, every year um, the biggest thing is we started writing down. Um, I write, write it down like what when I'm going good, what am I what am I feeling? Uh, I know my swing really well as you know, if I go in the it, it's one pitch, if I take a swing and if it doesn't feel right, I know it's not right. Um, to be able to get back to that feeling uh, mm. quicker rather than later, I think that was the, the biggest key. You know, Jeremy Reed, uh, Paul Sorrento and, you know, Mike Ashford, they do a really good job on taking a lot of video for me and just they know when I'm messed up and, you know, they really know my swing and, you know, I know. Like I said, I know it takes it takes one swing to know if my swing's feeling good, and you know to be able to get back to you know when it's right. I think that's that's what's helped me the most. Oh, it's fascinating. Uh, we know you are a huge Philadelphia Eagles fan. You've had more time to take a peek at the draft here uh, while you've had this time on your hands. Anything you want to see your favorite team pull off this year in the draft? Yeah, I uh, think we need to get some uh, some receivers for Carson. Um, you know, we got some great receivers, obviously, with D. Jax and uh, Alshon, but uh, get a young stud, and there's a lot of great uh, receivers in this draft, and uh, I'm sure Howie will make the right decisions, and I'm looking forward to the season. Hopefully, they uh, they start on time, and, you know, we're not, t we're not even talking about this next year, you know, going into the next year. We love you. I, I love that you're talking about Howie Roseman, the GM, and Carson Wentz. And <laughs> that you've gotten to know everybody around the Eagles organization. I mean, you are a superstar in the American pastime of baseball, yet you are first row at the link, huge fan. How do other fans react to you just being a normal sports fan when you're one of the biggest superstars in all of sports? Yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. Obviously, Philly, uh, Philly fans are unbelievable. Um, it was a little, little crazy. It was just a couple games after I signed that contract with the Angels that I got uh, a little, little uh, smack talk when I got to the stadium. But uh, I can't say enough about you know, <laughs> Eagles fans, uh, just Philadelphia fans, just a the passion they have for sports. You know, I'm one of them. Obviously, watching the Eagles games every Sunday, and and um, you know, like I said, it's there's nothing better than you know, uh, rocking at the link on a you know Monday night or a Sunday night. And home for you now is uh, Anaheim with the Angels. Hey, you did a great thing. I don't want to go, go away without mentioning this. Uh, you gave a little pep talk to some of the first responders and the frontline folks there uh, out in Anaheim, California. Uh, how important was that for you to share a message of encouragement for people who are the real heroes right now? Yeah, it's very important. Obviously, they mean a lot to our community, uh, our country, you know, everybody, not just Anaheim, uh, all the officers, the nurses, um, they're just uh, what they're doing right now is just pretty incredible. Uh, the brave, how brave they are to be able to go in, you know, a hospital or, you know, to, to fight to fight this virus on a on a level that uh, you know no one's ever seen before. It's just, um, you know, I'm, you know, I can't thank them enough. Uh, yeah, you know, I think, um, you know, seeing a couple of the officers at the stadium and now seeing them, you know, outside just uh, yeah. doing their job. And uh, yeah, like I said, the nurses and the officers and. The firefighters, you know, all the first responders, um, you know, they are, you know, we're very fortunate to have people like that. And, um, you know, like I said, I can't thank them guys enough.
As good as it gets in baseball. Three-time American League MVP, reigning MVP, eight-time All-Star. Uh, Mike, good luck with uh, the baby on the way in August. Good luck with the Eagles and the draft, maybe more importantly for you. And uh, hopefully we'll get you <laughs> back on the baseball diamond real soon. We, we appreciate you hitting the leadoff spot for us today. No problem. Anytime.